Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tade Boboye. I greet you with Christ's joy. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Great is our Lord and greatly to be praised. And yes, that's what we're doing here this morning. Praising our great God uh, who has done great things uh, for us. And we're glad that you've come to join us in this broadcast as we continue in our message series in the book of Esther with a message entitled Timing is Everything Part 2. We're going to go back to where we left off last Sunday as we were talking on the Father's Days on the two things that we men need and want you, our women, to do for us. Just as I see what King Ahasuerus would want and need Esther, the queen, to do for him at such a crucial time as we come to Esther chapter 5. Why don't you invite a friend, join us as we worship, and I'll come back and pray with you. It's going to be good. Hey, it's going to be good. You'll be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Receive the word. Hallelujah. Last Sunday being Father's Day, we began to challenge you, our ladies, on the two things I believe women want and need you to do for us at any crucial time based on what I see King Ahasuerus would want Queen Esther to do for him even though he may not have said it in so many words right here from this text two things because I believe that men were destined for greatness there's an irrevocable destiny that awaits us men but we're also in a spiritual warfare and we have an enemy that doesn't want us to get to where God is calling us to be. And to be everything that God wants us to be. But God has placed you, ladies, to be our helpmate. To be that come alongside of us like the Holy Spirit. The paraclete, the one who comes alongside. To help to complement us not to compete with us but to complement us in the things perhaps that needs to be completed oh I'm completing me I'm completing Jesus but do you know that there's some things that I need my wife for even though I'm all that and a bag of chips too, I still need this woman. You still need your woman. That's why God gave you to us. If I'm all that, I will need her. But with her, I'm all that. And the enemy... No. <laughs> Good to see you in the house. And the enemy is after the man. Because he knows if he can bring the man down in the house. He knows if he can take away the covering in the house. Then that house is divided against itself. And so we need you to do some things for us at certain crucial times. Because believe you me, I have some blind spots. Ooh. You want me to make my wife come and testify to you? And you have some blind spot too. But together, somebody said together. We can be 
everything and all need that God wants you and done to be. We need each other. And I share with you that the first Father's Day gift you can give us men is number one. Put it up. We want you to be proactive, ladies, and not reactive. Here was Esther about to confront her husband who in this case happens to be the most powerful man in the world back then. She didn't run into the palace and just give him a piece of her mind that she can't even afford to lose. No, no, no. Look at what she did in verse 1. After she's been praying and fasting for three days. Look at what she did. Verse 1. Now it came about on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes, meaning she put on her prettiest dress. Keep reading. And stood in the inner court of the king's palace in front of the king's room. Remember the king hasn't sent for her in how many days? 30, 30 days. Here was a, a wife who hasn't seen her own husband in 30 long days. Forget about a man having a need. A woman has a need to, you know. And she needed to have an important talk with the king. So, what did she do? Picture this royal beauty queen. Standing Regally, oh, I, I need a lady to help me do this. I, I can just picture a big, huge palace with columns in those palaces, right? Columns. And Esther was handi- hiding behind those, one of the columns. And the king is sitting down there. And Esther just came out and. Oh, I. In verse 2, standing here. She took his breath away. Ladies, ladies, do you know there's a way to take your man's breath away? When you need to get his attention without marching into the living room and planting yourself between your man and the TV. (laughs) With your hand in, the, in your waist, going, uh, uh, demanding, it's, it's you or the TV. <laughs> Do you know there's a way you can get your husband's attention without planting yourself in front of the TV? She didn't even go sneaking some Bible verses and putting it on his pillow. Or, or blasting, or blasting the whole house with the pastor's message. Where are my married sisters here? Married sisters, let me hear you. Where are my married sisters here? Have you forgotten how you first took your man's breath away? When he first laid his cat eyes on you? Have you forgotten? No, no. Who says the honeymoon has to be over? Sure, the king hasn't sent. The king hasn't sent for sister girl in a month. And what the sister girl Esther did, she put it up herself. Look for a woman next to you and say, pretty up yourself, girl. Pretty up yourself, girl. Pretty up yourself, girl. Oh, 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 I, I, I just want to say, I just want to say to a sister here, it's amazing what putting on your husband's favorite dress will do to him. Come on now. Oh, it's amazing. Ladies, I was thinking about that as I was doing this study and I came back to it again. I said, why would the scripture tell us in verse 2 that she put on a royal robe? What significance does that have? What's that got to do with anything? Ah, it's got much 
to do about what God wants to do here so the king's attention can be gotten. And there's something you women have that can get our attention. Pretty up, pretty up, pretty up. Ladies, there's nothing wrong with dressing to get your husband's attention. The Bible says here that Esther put on her royal robe so she could, she could get the king's attention. And as soon as he laid his cat eyes on her, ooh, you go ahead and read between the lines with your sanctified imagination. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with dressing to get your husband's attention as long as you're not trying to get another woman's man's attention. Oh, 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 you, you, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know how some women can be not minding their own business, like a lady who came to a pastor's wife to ask her what the pastor's favorite pie is, and she said, can you, can you just tell me what kind of pie the pastor likes? Because I would like to make the pastor his favorite pie. And the pastor's wife said, she just looked her up and down. Mm. Ooh. She said she didn't really have any problem with the lady making a pie. She had a problem with her singling out a pie just for the pastor. That was a problem. And she said, what kind of pie does the pastor like? Because I would like to bake one for the family. Now, this didn't happen to us. Don't think this is anybody here, okay? <laughs> it's a story I heard. True story. The, I heard the pastor wife sharing it. He said, if, if the woman had said, what kind of pie does the pastor like? Because I would like to bake one for the family. She said she might have and would have told her. But the pastor's wife said, there was no way, no way on earth she was going to give this lady any information so she can go make a better pie than her. <laughs> oh, you you, are, you have no clue. Some ladies can make pie. <laughs> and she said, she said, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Not in this life or the life to come. And she said, the pastor's wife politely told this lady, he likes this pie. <laughs> Pointing to herself. Smart woman. Oh, come on now, come on now. That church lady was trying to get someone else's man's attention. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm talking about how to get your own man's attention when you need to get through to your Ahasuerus like Esther. And ladies, you don't need to be pushy to get your way either. I, I can hear someone saying, <laughs> Pastor, you don't know my husband. If I'm not pushy, I don't get nothing from him. All right. I don't know your husband. But if he is a difficult man like a king Ahasuerus, I'm just telling you like a man myself, men don't like pushy women. Am I right, gentlemen? Oh, gentlemen, help me, please. I need all my brothers to help me here. Uh, uh, this is still part two of last week's message for you. So, all I'm saying to you is, from what I see here in this text, ladies, Esther is teaching you to be proactive, not reactive, when you, get, when, when you need to get your man's attention. Esther needed desperately to get the king's attention. And she's been praying and fasting. And God said, put on your royal robe. She's teaching you to be prudent, not pushy, 
in presenting your case. She, 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 didn't, she didn't go rushing into the king's court crying, choose me or Haman today. It's me or Haman today. Choose me or Haman. No, 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 no. She just picked it up herself. And the king says to her, Sister Audrey, you're feeling me, in verse 3. Look at it. Verse 3. What's troubling you, Queen Esther? <laughs> see, see, the king still remembers she, he has a queen. She didn't say Esther. She said, what's troubling you, Queen Esther? Mm. See, it worked. Because how you approach a matter is just as important as what the matter is. Ooh. The how is just as important as the what. Can I get a witness from somebody here who knows what I'm talking about? C come on. Don't you know? Don't you know? Just because you're doing the right thing doesn't mean it's the right timing. You can be doing the right thing at the wrong time. That's why timing is every. Which leads me to the second point that I see we, we men want and need you to do for us. Based on, based on what I see, King Ahasuerus desperately needed here. I'm just giving you a recap for those of you who were here on Sunday last week so you can catch up with us. Here's the second thing. We need you and want you to be patient. And not impatient. That's, that's, I, I, I'm going to take you deeper soon. I'm going to take you deeper soon. Stay with me. This is just a recap. So the king asked Esther, What's your request? Verse 3. I, I don't know what's wrong with you, queen. But whatever is wrong, I'm going to fix it. In fact, I'm going to give you even half of my kingdom will be yours. Just tell me what's troubling you. Ladies, help me out here. Isn't that what you want to hear from your man? That is actually going to listen to you for a change and do something about what is bothering you. Some of you are still looking at me funny. Like Dr. Ty, that would be a miracle. <laughs> okay. Who said miracles still don't happen? Your man could be a miracle waiting to happen in the mighty hand of God. But look at Esther's answer to the king. Oh, I'm liking this woman already. And I don't even know her. Verse 4, except what I'm reading. Verse 4, Esther said, if it pleases the king, may the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I prepared. Haman! You mean Haman the hater? The same Haman who is plotting to kill your uncle Mordecai? And all his people, including you, Esther, inviting him. Esther, you mean you're going to invite him to a banquet you're going to prepare with your own hands? Even if she invited him to a dinner, Auntie Mabel was telling us a joke on Wednesday night. She said, if she was Esther... She knows what she would have put in Haman's food. <laughs> Uncle Ivan, you're good. <laughs> She's saying, if I was Esther. Okay. He said, I know what I would have put in Haman's food. I mean, this is Esther's moment to rip Haman apart. The king has just given her a blank check to use as she wants. And says, Whatever it is, I'll do it for you up to half of my kingdom. But she didn't use the check. 
inside it's more it's more like guess who's <laughs> guess who's coming to dinner <laughs> ah she could have even said i'm glad you asked king you want to know what's troubling me do you have time put down the remote control i'll tell you what's troubling me you're the one troubling me you are my tro <laughs> the nigerian me is coming out <laughs> you are the one troubling me for signing up with him and to kill my people but she didn't say none of that because what the word of god is trying to teach us here is there's a way to approach your husband ladies when you sense is about to make a terrible mistake and the way is not to go out cold and tell him that he is about to receive the jerk of the year award why because timing is oh turn to the person turn to the person next to you and tell him timing is everything timing is everything You can be right. You can be so right. But be so right on time too. Because if you're right, don't match with your timing. You sabotage that right at the expense of the timing. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, there's time for everything under the earth. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to shout, a time to be silent. A time to sow, a time to reap. A time to tear apart, a time to tear down. A time to build up, a time to tear down. A time to speak and a time to shoot. Esther was not in a hurry. You know why? She's patient and not impatient. She's been waiting on the Lord in prayer and fasting for three days. Verse 5. So the king and Haman came to the banquet which Esther had prepared. See ladies? That worked too. Uh, she gave the men a full course meal before unloading. Are you getting the picture here? A good sumptuous meal would do the trick for us too. What do y'all say? What do y'all say? The way to a man's heart is through his. Oh, it always works, baby. So watch this. The king says to Esther again, verse 6, what is your petition? What is your request? Name it and I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Verse 7. So Esther answered and said, my petition and my request is... you notice there's a break there do, do you notice there's a break there do you notice that break Ooh. say it Esther now is the time to spill the brain spill the my petition and my request is watch verse 8 verse 8 if I found favor in the sight of the king and if he pleases the king to grant my petition and do what I request what rest what what we want to hear it May the king and Haman come to the banquet, which I shall prepare for them. And tomorrow, I will do as the king. Say what, Esther? 
She says, King, my request is come here again for dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow? Are you kidding me, Esther? A second dinner? What made her postpone what she could have said? Why this strange delay, Nancy? What is about this woman? Does she just love cooking? I know the, I know the king loves banquet. Ooh, the king loves banquet. You remember in chapter 1? He threw a banquet that lasted for how many days? 180 days. Six months. Mm. As if that was not enough. He threw another seven days banquet. But here was Esther. She's made the dinner to ask the king to save a people from the genocide him and the hater was planning. So she's, she has both men where she wants them. And they're drinking. Everybody's happy. The king asked her for whatever she wants. And she said, what I want is for you to come to dinner tomorrow. What? Oh, somebody missed that. Somebody missed a juicy one. Tell your neighbor a juicy one is coming. Mm. I told you last Sunday. I'm taking you deeper now. That's all recap. I told you last Sunday when you come back that I was going to tell you something you've missed here. See, something supernatural happened to Esther between verse 6 and verse 8 to make her to change a mind to make her go tight-lipped. Something happened between verses 6 and 8. There's a divine delay. Write it down. Divine delay. Mm. Not Esther delay. Because there are some things that you and I delay about because God says move and we don't move, we delay. But there's a delay that is called divine delay. No matter what you do. Ah, I said, no matter what you do, if it's not the time, <laughs> doors are going to be shutting. You're going to be wondering, what in the world is going on? Why are doors shutting at me? Divine delay. Somebody say divine delay. Divine delay. Oh, divine delay is good. Watch this. Something happened. Because timing Did you see in verse 7 that Esther didn't finish her sentence? Go back to verse 7. She didn't finish her sentence in verse 7. Uh, she said, my petition and my request is, colon, there's a break. And it goes blank. And then she jumps to, let's have dinner again tomorrow in verse 8. That's not our request. Something is happening here, church. So, I know you all wanted to know what made her change the subject. That's why you came back this morning. So, who here is ready for the juicy one? Yeah. Some would criticize Esther for not pleading her case right there and then. Esther might even seem like a fool to some for not striking while the iron was hot. You, 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 what the world will teach us, what the world will teach you, is strike when the iron is. The king had just promised to give her whatever she wanted. So what was she waiting for? I'll tell you. Write this down. It's not what she's waiting for. It's not what she's waiting for. But who she's waiting for? Ah. Oh, that, that is deep. That is deep. That is deep. See, see, see. We're going, what is she waiting for? No, 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 no. Who is she waiting for? She's been waiting on the Lord who she's been praying and fasting to. And, and it's, it, it's that God, I believe, who stopped Esther right in her tracks. Before she opened her mouth. 
because the timing wasn't right yet. There's a divine reason the request Michael was pushed back till the next day. A divine reason. See, the providential God knew that it was going to be much better. My auntie Vi, it was going to be much better if this matter was pushed back the next day. So God directed Esther's step to do you, I, I, do you know there are times where you just wanted to say something to somebody and you just <laughs> that's God. That, that's your divine delay right there. Because something in you wants to give them and rip and just give them the peace of your mind. But that's the divine delay because the timing ain't right. Why? Because there's a principle in the scripture called in the fullness of time. Oh! <laughs> oh, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. There's a principle in the scripture called in the fullness of time. See, Haman's fullness of time hasn't come yet. His fullness of time has to come before God does what God wants to do here. See, I told you to interact your, with your word whenever you're reading. Don't, don't just read. If Esther wasn't impatient in spilling the beans right away, the king might have given Haman a benefit of a doubt. After all, Haman was his second-hand man. There's something called loyalty, you know. Even though Esther is the queen, Haman is also a second-hand man. He's going to say, okay, well, Esther, uh, let, me, let me investigate. He won't go right away if his man will what his salt and just say, oh, yeah, I believe you. He want to give him a benefit of a doubt. But because timing is everything and the fullness of time has not come yet, Esther pauses and says to the king, Oh, come back tomorrow. In that God also needs time to work on three things. Just as important as the things we're waiting for is, somebody here needs to understand that the work God does while you're waiting is equally important. Oh, let me say that again. Give me, oh, thank you. Oh, wow, you're right on, Deacon. Just as important as the things we're waiting for is the work God does while we're waiting. Oh, that's good. And the three things he needs to work on while we're waiting are this. Write it up. Put it up. Quickly, I'm going to give it to you right now. Number one, it works on us. Number two, it works on others. Number three, it works on your, our circumstances. Those are the three things throughout the scripture. While we're waiting. Oh, I, I, I know waiting is something that don't come natural for any one of us. Especially in this age of instant everything. We have instant potato, instant tea, instant coffee, instant Instant rice. There's even a place in the state. I don't know if you, you all know that. There's a place in the state where you can go and have an instant funeral. All you need to do is just drive through. Go through the drive through. And pay your last respect to your Uncle Boo. And you're done. Drive through funeral home in the states. Oh, it's hard for us to wait for anything. Is there anybody in here who love waiting? Like the man who was trying to understand the nature of God and time. So he asked God, God, what's million years to you? And God answered, oh, well, a uh, million years just like a second to me. Then the man has God. God? Uh, what's a million dollars to you? 
And God said, oh, well, a million dollars is just like a penny. So the man thought about it and said, okay, God, if a million dollars is like a penny to you, can you give me a million dollars? God looked at him and said, son, wait a second. Mm. That's going to be a long wait. Wouldn't you say? Because the scripture tells us that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day. That's not a long time for God. That's a long time for us, but not for the ancient of days. Hello, somebody. Because if you are a believer and you've lived long enough, you should know by now that God doesn't walk at the speed we want him to walk. Has anybody noticed that when you are in a hurry, God isn't? <laughs> the hardest kind of waiting is when you're in a hurry and God is not. Oh, I, 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 think, I think the psalmist, the psalmist wasn't joking when he wrote in Psalm 90, Psalm 90 verse 4, that, that a thousand years uh, it, it's like a day in the sight of the Lord and, 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 and like a watch in the night. Because anytime God says to you, soon, 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 dear Allah, you have to understand that God's soon and your soon are not the same soon. Oh, that's good. Write it down. My soon and God's soon are not the same soon. To me, soon means like yesterday. To me, soon means five minutes after God said it. But God soon can be 20 years. God soon can be 75 years. Oh. But if you know the word of God, you know what happens to people who wait upon the Lord. That the Bible says, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings uh, like the eagles uh, and they shall run uh, and not be weary uh, and they shall walk uh, and not go friend. Oh, 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 oh. Because, because can you see now that there's a divine reason in the delay to set up human. <laughs> did, you, did you hear what I just said? The principle of the fullness of time means when the fullness of time hasn't come, God ain't going to do nothing. God was waiting to set Haman up for his fullness of time to come. And somebody here, God is setting your Haman up too. You say, Lord, this person is messing with me lord i can't take this anymore wait 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 i'm a witness the fullness of time hasn't come yet and so somebody here i just came to tell you that god is setting up your amen all you need to do is stop be patient and wait on the lord Knowing, Carolyn, that this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord, your God. What? Come back next week. Esther didn't even have to fight anything. It, it, she didn't even have to say the king. This is what is wrong. Watch this. The rest of the plot in the story shifts back to Amen in verse 9 to 14. Because God is still walking behind the scenes. Esther may be ready to spill out the beans on Haman. But God still needs to make the king see Haman for who he truly is. 
Esther could be ready, but the king wasn't ready. And Amen's fullness of time still has to come. See, it works on us, others, circumstances. And, 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 and he, 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 he needed to, the king needed to see a convincing proof of who Amen truly is. He needs to know the truth about Amen first. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall. That's why you can't just base your feelings on just what you hear. The truth shall set you free. Keep reading, verse 9. Then Amen went, I'm almost done. Went out that day, glad and pleased of heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, and he did not stand or tremble before him, Haman was filled with anger. This person here, oh, I, I, I was going to use a word, I won't even use it. It's like two people are living in him. Happy. The mom. You know that one person that gets under, on the, under human skin. You know that one person. And he gets home. And he talks to his wife. Who appears to be more creepier. Than he was. Her name was Zeresh. So he says. That Mordecai. Really gets under my skin. He drives me bananas. Each time I see him. What can I do? What am I going to do? Zeresh? Verse 14. See how creepy she is. Verse 14. She says, well, if he drives you crazy so badly, why don't you build a gallows about 70 feet, 75 feet high? That's 50 cubits. 75 feet high. Now, Mordecai is only like 5'7 like me. Jewish men are not tall. They're short and bald. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry for you. So, 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 why would he need 75 feet high stake to hang a 5'7 man? That's what hate will do to you. It will make you lose all senses. So, 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 so it says, why don't you build 75 feet high gallows and hang him on it for everybody to see as a warning? To anyone who wants to mess with you, Haman. Verse 14, and the advice pleased Haman. So all night, he built up the gallows. Intending to hang Mordecai the next morning. Do you remember? Is supposed to be a year later. When they cast the lot in chapter 3. The lot says don't do anything till the year is gone. But Mordecai, Haman is not going to wait another year. He's not going to even wait one more night. In the morning, Mordecai will die. But so he thought. Until we come to Esther chapter 6 verse 1. Where I'm taking you. During that night. Everybody say that night. Shoo. Say it again that night. The king. Could not sleep. Oh I feel like preaching right about here. During that night, not just any night, not the night before, not the night after, but that very night that Mordecai was to be hanged on the morning, the king couldn't sleep. Oh, you're not hearing me. Give me the lifeline, I'm almost done. The, the four, I, I'm giving you two life points. I'm not usually giving two life points, but give me the next life point. Watch this. See, sometimes 
God's timing requires an overnight express deliver. Somebody holler that night. It was in the middle of the night, in the midnight hour, that Paul and Silas had their prison breakthrough in Acts chapter 3, 16. And the Bible says in verse 25, but about midnight, somebody holler about midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. Verse 26, and suddenly... There came a great earthquake, and immediately everyone's chains fell up. Oh, somebody better come get me. Is there anybody in here who knows that your God is still a chain breaker? I, I said, does anybody in here know that your God is still a prison shaking savior? Has anybody here discovered that sometimes God's miracle ain't so much in what he does as to when he does what he does? We're looking at the what. I'm saying to you this morning, consider the when. <laughs> I mean, you can tell me that the parting of the Red Sea was just a fluke caused by an earthquake or a windstorm and it just happened by chance or by luck at the exact moment Moses lifted up his rod over the sea oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah talk all the trash you want hey man but I just came to tell you this morning that the God I worship and the God I serve is an on-time God. He's never early. He's never late. He's always right on time. Mm. He may not come to you in the morning. He may not come to you in the noonday. But you can count on it as surely as the sun will rise. He will come to you at the right time so wait for him so that Esther chapter 6 verse 1 says give it to me and that night about that night during that night what night the night that Haman the hater was building his gallows to hang Mordecai the next day I'm talking about that night that Queen Esther delayed telling the king what was troubling her I'm talking about that night that Amen think he is the boss over you I'm talking about that night not that night but that night that the king had insomnia and he couldn't sleep oh I could have called this sister Dunn I could have called this message that night I'm saying the king in Persia may not know why you, he can't sleep but there's another king in heaven who knows why the king in Persia can't sleep because my Bible says in Psalm 121 verse 4 behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep So somebody here, I just came to pray over you as I go take my seat. I just pray, came to pray over you. I don't know why God brought you here. I don't know why God brought you here. I just came to pray over you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't let your Haman scare you. Don't let your Haman intimidate you, Esther, into rushing into things and running ahead of God. You just be proactive and be patient because David says to tell you in Psalm 121, the Lord is your keeper. Somebody shout amen. amen. I'm praying for you now. The Lord is your keeper. 
The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from evil. Shout amen. amen. The Lord will keep your soul. The Lord will guide your going out. The Lord will guide your coming in. From now and forevermore. Shout yes. <laughs> all I'm saying to you is all I'm saying to you is just trust in the Lord's timing and it will make all things right stand up on your feet worship him welcome back wow I hope you were blessed by that message a continuation part 2 of Timing is everything. Hey, women, ladies, we need you to be proactive and not reactive. And we need you to be patient and not impatient with us. And uh, we see what God can do uh, when we wait on this timing. Uh, it does all things well. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. We're glad you've joined us this morning as we continue and as we continue to worship the Lord here at Wema Heights. It, it's our dress down Sunday. Uh, Summer is here, and we're celebrating uh, the God of all seasons. Uh, winter, summer, springtime, and harvest is still God. And we're glad you've joined us this morning. I just want to pray with you right now. Whatever it is that you're waiting on the Lord for, uh, that you will be proactive and you will be patient as you wait on God, that God will renew your strength. Why don't I pray for you right now? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for that person who is watching this broadcast, that this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, or afternoon, whenever they're watching this, that they will learn to be patient, to patiently wait on you, Lord. That as they wait on you, God, uh, they will step out in faith and see you do what only you can do. We thank you that you are still the God uh, who is in control. Adonai, uh, El Shaddai, the Almighty God. And so, Father, give them the patience that they need and the endurance that they need. That having done all, they will stand and see you do great and mighty things we thank you for the salvation you've given to us and for the grace of christ uh, that lives in us and his strength in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen listen if you receive that word why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen let us know how much this was such a blessing to you because when you're blessed we're blessed and above all our lord is glorified in heaven oh it's happening this is our summer month and we're back to combined service now at 10 30 and we'd love to have you be part of our live worship here at Wilma. We're located on 1687 Victoria Park Avenue, south of Lawrence. And hey, uh, in two weeks, July the 6th to 8th, we're going to be at the Taste of the Lawrence. Our Taste of Wilma, our Taste of Lawrence. And we want you to come and visit us at our booth. We're going to be bringing Christ to our street. And we, we want you to come and celebrate and witness and share the gospel uh, with people on the street as we bring Christ to East Toronto and beyond. We love you. We thank God for you. And I'm praying that the best is yet to come in our life. That the rest of your days shall be the best of your days. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Love you.